Uh, welcome to lesson 22, which is uh, 401k plans, re retirement. So we've talked about credit cards, we've talked about simple and compound interest, we've talked about mortgages, and now we're going to talk about 401k plans. So we are going to uh, help Celeste, our friend, um, decide if it's going to be smart for her to invest in her company's 401k contribution plan. Now, uh, some interesting information that you're going to want to know. Um, 36000 is her annual salary. 15% of that goes to her income taxes. All right? So when we look, uh, if you notice, we have these two uh, charts here on page 197. On the left, we have uh, her situation, Celeste's situation, without contributing to the 401k plan. So her monthly pay. Well, how are we going to find her monthly pay? Well, she makes $36,000 annually, right? Well, let's divide that guy by 12, and that will give us um, our monthly pay. So Celeste bring, um, makes, right, she earns $3,000 a month. She is not contributing anything to the 401k. In this uh, pay contribution here, that's, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's company. Uh, the company is not putting anything in, so that's really like also a zero. How much is she paying in income taxes? Well... 15% of her pay. So if we take her $3,000, which is her pay, multiply it by the 15% or 0.15, we end up with $450 going to income tax. So if she, is pay, or she earns $3,000, $450 goes to income tax. If we subtract, we get her take-home pay of $2,550. Okay, well, the nice thing about 401k plans is that they are pre-taxed, meaning your paycheck um, is deducted the $100 that is going, right? So it's not, I shouldn't really even say deducted because the money is still yours. You're just putting it away for retirement. So we're shifting it from your paycheck to your retirement account, and that is done before you are taxed on your earnings. So if she is still making $3,000 a month, so now, um, $100 of that is going to her 401k contribution. So um, her income taxes are only being figured on $2,900 because $100 of it is gone. So if you subtract those, we get her $2,900 that she's being taxed on times 0.15, and we come up with income taxes of $435. Now to find her take-home pay... You take her $3,000 she earned, minus the $100 she put in her 401k, minus the $435 they took out in taxes. So the take-home pay is $2,465. Does that make sense? Um, so we're still, the 401k, even though it's still your money, you're not bringing it home with you, right? We're putting it in the 401k plan. So that is kind of how we look at these um, charts here, the way I interpret them anyway. And when we look at the questions on the bottom page 197, how much is Celeste saving in income taxes by investing $100 in the 401k savings plan? Well, she paid $450 in the first one for income taxes, and she paid $435 in the second. So if we want to know the savings, right, take the difference, she is paying $15 less in income taxes by uh, contributing to her 401k plan. Okay, so she put $100 in her 401k, and her, her take-home pay went from $25.50 to $24.65. So her take-home pay really only um, diminished by $85. So she's actually saving money um, or earning more, taking home more, however you want to take, say it, um, by investing because that $100 is pre-taxed, and, and that makes it a whole lot nicer. All right, well, some companies, let's move to page 198. Some companies are a little bit nicer in that they will match some or all of your contribution. So in number three, her HR representative informs her the company will match 50% of her 401k contributions. So if she would put in $100, they would put in 50. If she would put in 40, they would put in 20, right? They put in half of whatever she does. So Celeste gets excited and said, I'm going to put in $150 every month. All right, so she is still earning $3,000 a month. That hasn't changed. She has decided, right, Celeste is now putting in $150 into her 401k. So if her company is matching 50%, well, what's one half of 150? 
and that is $75. So her company is putting in $75. How much now is she paying in income taxes? Well, if you take the $3,000 minus $150, that gives us $2,850. Multiply that by the 15%, and you should come up with $427.50. Her take-home pay, start with the $3,000. Take away the 150 that is now in her retirement. Take away the 42750, and you now have a take-home pay of 242250. Okay, we're gonna use this table um, to answer some more questions here, number three. But that's kind of how those numbers come to be there in that table. So let's go to three. Oh, I guess three A here is um, it's it's hard to see, but it's right there. How much will her take-home pay be with the higher investment? Well. Twenty-four, twenty-two, fifty. We just figured that out in the table. Let's go to three B. How much will Celeste contribute annually? Well, this kind of goes back to the whole mortgage payments and how much will you pay annually with those? Well, if she decides that she wants to pay one fifty a month, well, how many months are in a year? Twelve. Okay, so one fifty times twelve. She's going to contribute $1,800. I would like you to hit pause and try to answer the rest of the questions in number three. See if you can. And then come back and watch the description if you need some more help. Okay, and letter C, how much will the company contribute annually? Well, remember, the company is contributing half of what she does. So you can do this two ways. They contribute $75 a month times 12, which gives you $900. Or... You could have said, well, if Celeste is giving $1,800, the company is doing half of that, which would be $900. And letter D, how much money would be invested to the account each year, assuming no changes? Well, Celeste is putting in $1,800. The company is putting in $900. So together, $2,700 are going into her account annually. Letter E, write a ratio that represents the company's annual con contributions. Okay, let's start with that. Company's annual contributions. We know that that is 900. Two, two means, right, the, the fraction bar, to the total amount invested. And we know the total amount invested is 2,700. Remember, this is, if you remember from way back when, this is part to whole. And if we have part to whole, we can write it as a percent. Did you remember that? I don't know if you did, but now you did. So if we want to figure that out, here's a ratio. But when we go to letter F and want to write a meaningful sentence, if I take 900 divided by 2,700, it's going to give me approximately 33% if I change it to a percent. So a meaningful sentence, the company, well, let me type it out. So the company contributes 33 of the investment annually. Because right? that's what we're talking about. The, they tell you in the beginning we're talking about annually, so that's what we're dealing with. All right, at the bottom, oh, sorry, I didn't get the letter G, my bad. If Celeste remains with the company for 40 years, she will eventually have deposits that sum to $108,000. Assuming no changes have been made to the, four, oh, typo, to the 401k savings plan, how much of this amount was provided by the company? Well, remember, the company has been contributing one-third. 900 over 2,700 is one-third. So one-third of that 108000 was contributed by the company. So if we do the math, right, this is like saying um, 108,000 over 3, and when I get that, I get $36,000 was contributed by the company. And just for fun, if the company contributed 36,000, how much did Celeste contribute? Well, we know that she is double that, well, they're half her. Um, or what plus 36,000 gives me 108,000, and that is 72,000, and that is Celeste. I know they don't ask for that in a question, but I think it's important to think about anyway. All right, at the bottom of page 198, we talk about Excel, and now <coughs> with 401ks, right, you're trying to find the future value of this um, investment. With credit card, or um, excuse me, with mortgages, we were finding out either the amount of payment, which was PMT function, or the present value of a house. And now we're ta talking about the future value of an investment. But if you look at these numbers in here, they are almost identical. Monthly interest rate, right? We're going to take the percent divided by 12. Number of deposits, how, if they're doing it every month, how many months are in a year? How many years are you doing this? And the deposit amount. 
Now, the big difference here is that this is going to be positive because this is your money, right? You're not in debt. You're not losing this money. You, this is your money. Okay, and there's actually a typo at the top of page 199 um, where it has a negative in there and it shouldn't. So, <clears throat> when we look at um, number four, we are on page 199. Page 199. How much more is in Celeste's account than what she invested? So, um, by using this future value point, um, here, let me just, it's just the top of page one, uh, 199. It's future value point zero two nine nine divided by 12, um, 12 times 40, and then 255. If you type that into Excel, it's going to spit out $207,868.17. So, after 40 years, that's how much money is in her account. Well, remember... We talked about on page 198 how much that she invested, right? So <clears throat> she invested some, the company invested some, and the rest is interest. So she invested $72,000. So if we subtract $72,000, how much more is in her account than what she invested? $135,868.17. So Celeste, either the company and then the interest from... Um, whatever she invested this in gave basically gave her over one hundred and thirty five thousand dollars i mean that 's pretty nice i 'm not going to say no if somebody wants to give me one hundred thirty five thousand dollars all right that 's a, a pretty pretty fair deal i think um, but you got to be consistent with your you know investment all right let 's continue on page one ninety nine number five Let's consider what happens when Celeste increases her monthly contributions to $200. So again, her company's contributing 15% or 50%, excuse me. So if she's putting in $200, then her company's putting in half of that. So half of 200, the company is contributing $100 a month. Okay, so if she deposits $200 into account, pays 2.99% annually, the company's matching 50%, What's the balance after 40 years? Okay, so now we need an Excel form. So we would use the future value. We want to know what is it going to be after 40 years. So here's um, my annual rate divided by 12 to make it monthly. 12 months in a year times 40 years. And then the 300. 200 from Celeste, 100 from the company. When I type that into Excel, it should spit out at me $277,157.56. And you know what? I'm going to take that. I'll take that every day. So, continuing on, how much of this was deposited by Celeste? Well, if you recall, Celeste contributed $200 a month, 12 months a year, for 40 years. So, if we multiply 200 times 12 times 40, we get $96,000. So, she put in $96,000. Remember, the company puts in half of what she does. So if I take half of 96,000, I get 48,000. Or you could have taken also for the company 100 times 12 times 40 because $100 a month, 12 months in a year, 40 years in this um, <clears throat> in this dealio. So together, how much did they put in together? Well, if I add these two lovely numbers together, I'm going to get a total of one hundred and forty-four thousand dollars. That's how much was um, deposited into this account. Then in number D, okay, so if we know how much was deposited, how then can we find how much interest was on this account? Well, we know the end balance of the account was two hundred seventy-seven thousand one hundred fifty-seven dollars and fifty-six cents. We know that one hundred forty-four thousand dollars was deposited. So the difference between the ending amount and the amount that was deposited is the interest. So when I subtract those, I get a $133,157.56. Not too bad. So then when you lead up, okay, so wait, let me say this is interest. That leads up to letter E. Total amount Celeste would profit. Well, obviously she profits the interest, which is the $133,000 and some change. But she also profits the $48,000 that the company gave her, right? She didn't have to put in that $48,000. She put in $96,000, and that's it. So together, she really profits 
$157.56. And that, my friends, is a pretty good deal. Okay, we are now on page 200, and we're playing now with Julia's money. I would like you to hit pause and see what you can do with Julia number six and Richard in number seven. You will need Excel, or page 201 at the bottom has um, calculated earnings, so uh, the, the formulas with answers. So go ahead and try six and seven on page 200, and then come back and check out the answers. Number six. If Julie deposits $100 each month for 35 years into a 401k savings, pays 3.99% annually, and her employee matches 100%, answer the following questions. How much money will Julie have cont contributed over the 35 years? Okay, so Julie. Julie put in $100 a month, 12 months in a year, for 35 years. She will have contributed $42,000. Well, how much will her employer have contributed? Well, the key here is they match 100%. That means whatever Julie does, that's what they do. So her company will also match that, right, and get $42,000. So 30, at the end of 35 years, what will her balance be? Well, to find the balance, we have to use the Excel. So let's get our Excel. All right, so we have our future value, 0 0.0399 divided by 12, comma, 12 times 35, so 35 years. And then I have $200 at the end because Julia's, Julia's putting in 100 and the company's putting in 100. So when you type that into Excel, it spits at you a very nice number of $182,356.76. That's pretty nice. Because when we think about interest, well, we take our ending balance and subtract what we deposited. And we know that she, okay, I'm going to change colors real quick. She put in 42000 and the company put in 42000 So the overall deposits was $84,000. So if I take my ending balance, subtract my deposits, I come up with a very beautiful interest of $98,356.76. I think Julia would be happy with almost $100,000 in interest. I would be happy with $100,000 in interest, but, you know, whatever. Richard, in number seven, he's putting $250 each month. His employer is not contributing, so we have no matching of any kind. So using Richard's, using Excel for Richard in letter A and B. <clears throat> All right, in letter A, 3.5% annually, 20 years. So we use our formula. Notice it's 20 years, so we've got that 20 right there. 250 because the employer is not matching. If you type that into Excel or use the table on page 201, after 20 years, Richard will have $119,641.90. Not too shabby after 20 years. After 40 years, which is part B, so you notice what the only thing that changes there is the 40 instead of 20, but everything else is the same. And after 40 years, Richard will have $261,166.72. Look at these numbers. We're talking 20 years. So in the first 20 years, Richard has approximately $120,000 in this account. In the next 20 years, it grows by $140,000, which leads us to see, is the balance after 40 years twice the balance after 20? Right, because you doubled the time, so you think your money should double. And the answer is no. It's more than double. Right? Because if you think about the whole compounding interest, this is the same concept. The longer you leave that money in, the more that's there, it's going to just keep um, earning more interest. And so that's good for you, right? I, I can't think of anything that would be bad for that. Okay, now looking at letter D. The 20 year balance is what percent? Hopefully, anytime you see that what percent, it makes you think of maybe a proportion, X over 100, right? And then on the other side, remember, we that is over of. So the 20-year balance is, well, the 20-year balance was $119,641.90 of the 40-year balance. So on the bottom, I would have $261,166.72, and... I need to cross-multiply, in case you had forgotten how to solve proportions. 
So I would have 261, 166.72x equals 1196419, oh, forgot my one. And then we divide both sides by 261166.72. And it gives us a nice percent, well, I don't know if you'd say it's nice, 41, 45.81%. So the 20-year balance is 45.81% of the 40-year balance, right? It's not half, because half would be 50%. It's less than half to get there. All right, we've got one more page in this video, which is page uh, 201. And, uh, let me see Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so on page 201, we've got Kane and Albert, and they have two different approaches to retirement. So, <coughs> Albert has $100 a month, and I'm just going to write some. I've got Al, and he's got $100, 40 years. Kane has 20 years, and he said, well, if I do twice as much money in half the time, I'll be fine. They both have a rate of 3.99%. So, <clears throat> for Albert, finding his future value. Kane, future value, we've got to use Excel. So here are the formulas you would use for each guy. Notice, same percentage. Um, Albert has 40 years, Kane has 20 years, and then Albert has $100 uh, deposit, while Kane has 200 So when you type those into Excel, they're going to give us, for Albert, we will have 117901. 25. So, uh, just shy of $118,000 for Albert. For Kane, he will have $73,272.55. That just seems weird, right? So, <clears throat> investor contributions. Well, Albert. Albert did $100 a month for 40 years, oh, 12 months in a year. So, this is Al. Well, that's $48,000. Kane did $200, 20 years, 12 months in a year, $48,000. So when it comes to their table, they both had $48,000 for this line. So they both put in the same amount of money, but they did not earn the same interest, right? How do we find the interest? If we know how much they put in, we know how much they ended with. If we subtract, so go ahead and take the future value minus the contributions, and we find out that Albert has earned $69,901.25 in interest, while Kane has only earned $25,272.55 in interest. So Kane is right in that, well, if he puts in twice as much for half the amount of time, he will have invested the same amount, right? They both invested $48,000. However... Because Albert's money was in there longer, it had more chance to um, increase with interest. All that compounding just adds up and adds up. So he earned far more money in interest. <clears throat> so when you look at these questions here, letter B, meaningful a right of ratio of Kane's interest earned to Albert's interest earned. Well, Kane's interest is 2572.55 to Albert's 69901.25. And this is part to part, so we cannot write it as a percent, but if you just divide, you get 0.36. And if you put it over 1, think about this. Top, this is Kane on the top and Albert on the bottom. So for, and when we're talking about interest, for every $1 that that Albert earns an in interest, Kane only earns 36 cents. So think about if you have two kids sitting next to each other and you say, Al, here's a dollar for you, Kane, here's 36 cents. And you just continue to do that. Al, you always get a dollar, Kane, you always get 36 cents, right? Kane's going to be ticked off. I mean, he's getting just, there's no, it's not fair. But that's how it is when you talk about these long term savings. The longer your money is in there, the better it's going to perform for you. So it's very important um, to understand that. If you can uh, afford to start a savings plan early and really invest for 40 years, it's going to be way better for you in the long run. And letter C. How much did Kane lose by starting 20 years later? Well, if you compare 
their interests, right? Let's just subtract their interests. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to go to, to a different page. But if you subtract their interests, you get a difference of $44,628.70. When they go to retire, Albert's going to have an extra $44,000. I mean, that's significant. I mean, that could be two more years of nice living, um, depending on how you're spending it and what you're doing, where you live, potentially. But that's significant. $44,000 is a lot of money. So Kane is losing out on all of that by waiting 20 years to start investing. So that's 401ks. I uh, hope you liked it. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, we will uh, keep on working. Thanks.